two ways to do something. Um, number one, so that you can just verify your results. And number two, just you have a faster way to do it. I'm just thinking that a lot of times my calibration processes take a certain amount of time, but I also just need a shortcut way to do things. You guys know I love shortcuts. I'm always talking about those in my videos and my articles and stuff. Anytime I find a shortcut, I feel like I'm, I'm getting ahead in life a tiny bit. It's silly, but, but it can be helpful. Um, that's what I talked about in this article. So I was doing this event in DC. President Biden and Vice President Harris both spoke at this um, Tribal Nations Summit. And it was a pretty simple system and it was in a small theater. But you know, the pressure's on when you do something like this for the White House and there are all of these uh, TV stations and journalists coming. And so what I'm going to talk about today is basically just how we had to add a speaker at the last minute and how I have uh, a longer method for calibrating fill speakers and then what my shortcut is. So I'll just give you the short version of the story real quick to see, so you can decide if you want to stick around. So the short version is that my long calibration procedure uh, or longer, you know, it's all relative, right? Um, basically involves using an audio analyzer and I get out my measurement microphone and using the impulse response, I search around for the acoustic crossover point, EQ, delay solo elements, and then verify summation and EQ combined system. And then the shortcut is to either use math or use subliner using distance measurements, which is totally appropriate in this situation, which I'll describe in a little bit. Okay. So yeah, last minute, I got the call on Sunday. I flew out on Sunday. We had set on Monday, rehearsals on Tuesday, and then the show was on Wednesday and then we striked Wednesday night. So it all happened very quickly. And that's kind of the theme of this video, right? Like what do you do when the pressure's on and you need to do things quickly? So let me give you just a quick walkthrough. So this isn't the exact dimensions of the room, um, but it's pretty similar. So we have a uh, JBL VRX 932. You know, what are the most common for better or for worse? You know, they still show up all the time. These speakers, you can't get rid of them. You can't kill them. They won't die. They won't go away. VRX 932 uh, on stands, tall stands. And initially this was the design and it was fine. You know, the room's not uh, super big. So basically all we need are some speakers and some fill speakers. And uh, I won't talk too much about this here, but I talk more about it here. There was uh, another AV company there. There was a completely duplicate AV system. So we actually needed to make space for them. So it was good that we only needed to put up four speakers initially. But when we got into rehearsals and we were listening, it started seeming like, hey, it might be really helpful to add more speakers so that we can drive these a little bit lower, um, get the volume up in the back a little bit higher. And we added some more here and we added them right before we were about to do something. I can't remember, open the house or, or start the show. So we only had a few, mo few minutes to get them set up and uh, get them calibrated. And you know, this is the kind of situation where I feel like most of us would just skip it, right? There's only a few minutes. You only have time to put up the speakers. But if you know a quick way to get it done, then you can still do your due diligence of doing the alignment and the calibration and move forward with some more confidence. So let's get into this. So let's talk about the, the first way that this gets done. So First of all, we've got, you know, some custody battles here. No, not custody battles, custody situations. So we've got our mains covering about this area and we've got our, um, let's call them relays covering about this area. So 
to uh, align these, you know, typically with an audio analyzer, I would, you know, find the on access point for each of these, you know, areas of custody, midpoint depth, like this, same thing over here. And then, uh, you know, get an on axis measurement here, get an on axis measurement here. And then in the end, you know, this speaker is going to end up being something like zero dB. And then this one's going to end up being something like minus six dB. Um, so one of the big things that changed is that when we decided, you know what, what we really need to do is get a lot more gain into the room and carry less and care less about just minimum variance across the audience. What we need is maximum gain before feedback at all locations. So we're just going to turn this speaker up to zero. So it was ha had some attenuation because it's covering less distance. Now we're going to turn it up to zero. Now we're going to even add this other speaker. So you can imagine, uh, well, let me just take you to the next step of the calibration procedure. So then the next step to align these two speakers is to find the crossover point between them. So that is the point where you, uh, they are at equal level. So I typically walk around a little bit, just see if I can find where it might be. Then I will uh, put my microphone down in some location and then I just move it around a little bit while I'm watching the impulse response until I can find two peaks. So both of these speakers are on at the same time and they're both showing up here with different peaks at the impulse response. And then I find where the, the same level and then I can do the alignment and further EQ, whatever I need to do. So just for fun, let me get you, give you a sense of what that might look like. Um, I think I can go over here and I think I can do this and I think I can do this. So I think we can just take a picture of what the mains look like. Okay. And so I'll just take a screen grab here with my head in it. Then let's unmute, unmute the, these guys here and you can see that they're down eight dB. Okay. So if they're down eight dB like that, I don't know if that's appropriate level. I think I just put that in there to test. Then to give you a sense of what it might sound like just with your eyes, then I can put this on top and I can change the opacity of this. Uh, I can go to 50%, 20%, 50%, 100%. So here you see when I go back and forth, we can kind of see where light colors are on top of each other. So it looks like maybe in this area here, right? So we're getting this kind of blue air, blue color up here, this blue color up here, matching this blue color here. Okay. So maybe up here. So that's to say that then you know, the crossover point when it would have, that's oh, not a good color. The crossover point would probably end up somewhere in this area. Then if we go to these speakers and we turn them up and we say, Hey, we've decided maximum gain before feedback, turn these back up to where they were before. Now you can see it's louder. And so now this acoustic crossover would shift this way, right? And so then we would need to do our alignment again. It just shifts by a little bit, but if you want to be accurate and you want to see where it ends up, then you would need to do that. Further complication is that then we added these two extra speakers. Um, by the way, if you ever have the option, in this case, I had a choice. I could pick two speakers, that were exactly like these speakers, these other speakers, these are all VRX 932. I could either pick these speakers or some other speakers. It doesn't matter what they are. In that moment, I thought, oh, the other speakers, the other option would actually be a better fit here because I need narrow coverage. 
but then I realized if I have all matching speakers, that'll make the alignment much easier, right? Then I have no questions about phase compatibility and I can do all my alignments with distance. It just makes everything simpler in these moments when we need to move quickly and have confidence in what we're doing. Um, so I think that was the right choice, even with the weird coverage overlaps that just made everything else easier. I even was able to just copy and paste some EQ. I just, I think I just used the same outputs I used for these speakers for these because I was trying to move so quickly. And that was totally fine because same speakers, similar location, the EQ is going to end up being similar. Okay. But what I would normally do as we talked about is I would have to go through, set the on axis level, do the solo EQ. And I enjoy all of that. Like I'm making it sound painstaking, but you know, this is a fun part of the job for me. But when we need to move quickly here, we can also do this with distance measurements. So what I actually did was uh, I just turned everything on together. And then I basically walked around in this area where I knew the acoustic crossover between these two speakers would be until I could hear that they are about the same level. Then I just stood here. I measured the distance to the main and the distance to the fill. And then I put those in to subaligner. So that would look like this. And I have the distances saved from that day. So these are the same distances. Uh, so this is the distance to the main, 8.8 .8 meters, distance to the fill, 3.6 meters. So just looking at this, you see, okay, there's about, I, I don't know, like a five meter difference in distance. Five meters is a, each meter is about three milliseconds. So I'm expecting about 15 milliseconds of delay. And that's what we get here. We can see that it's about 15 milliseconds of delay. So here using the one-to-one -one preset and subaligner, it's just quickly doing a distance to time conversion for you. And you can make that even more accurate if you want to go here to the speed of sound calculation, put in your ambient conditions, and then update the local speed of sound. That's not super critical for uh, low frequency spectral alignments with a small amount of distance, but can be a lot more critical for these full range sources that we're trying to align. So that's how you can do it with subaligner, but you could also just do it with a calculator or a spreadsheet. You could build your own little subaligner app. Uh, so you could open something like math notepad and you could put in, you know, uh, distance one equals, what did we say? This amount 8.84 and then distance two equals three or something, 3.68. And then we need the time. So that would be the difference in distance, distance two minus distance one divided by speed of sound, sound velocity, right? So uh, we can just put a C there and then we need to define that. So then C would be 345 or 1130, whatever you're using meters or feet. So here I'm using meters. And then we get this number, but that doesn't look right. So this must be in seconds. So we want time in milliseconds, or that looks kind of ugly here. I'll just do this. So we'll multiply by a thousand. And then maybe over here I can write time in milliseconds. Yeah, cool. So 14.95 and over here we get 14.93, very close, right? So um, you can do this kind of thing. You could also do something a little bit dirtier, which would be uh, this same value times three, right? That's pretty close. 2.9 is probably closer. There we go. Very close, actually. Uh, we can do something similar for feet where we, this is not going to be the same numbers, but we just multiply by either 0 0.9 
if it were feet uh, or uh, 0 0.885 is a little bit more accurate. So there you have some options and, and that's what I actually did here. So we put up these speakers. I knew I was basically just copying my gain and EQ settings. Uh, I turned them, turned everything on together. I just walked around until I found the acoustic crossover point. Uh, same thing for these guys. I just walked around until I found where they were, you know, similar in level is probably over here somewhere. Measure the distance, put that into subliner. We also had a front fill, but I had done that earlier also with subliner as well, but um, that was even the, the day before. And I'll just reiterate that this is totally applicable and super helpful for these situations where you have all matching speakers, all matching models, presets, nothing's different. You can have complete confidence that this method is going to work well. Now, if you start getting into separate models, well, then you need to verify that they're actually phase compatible. Um, and if you're doing like a main sub alignment, that's exactly what sub aligner is designed to do. It has all those presets in there for you so that when you go to the align page, there you go, you've got all your brands and models. Um, and uh, there is a previous article. Let's see if you go to Sound Design Live and you go to the previous one, Adventures in Alignment. Here I talk more about, um, you know, when distance measurements do and don't work. You know, you can always align, you can always equalize distance offsets with distance measurements, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be phase compatible. So you need to do a little bit of homework before the show, or you need to put up a microphone and do a measurement if you're not familiar with those speakers. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, this is, you know, just a helpful little shortcut that I use in the field all the time. And now uh, I just do alignments with subliner uh, for everything that I do. When I set up shows, um, the first thing I do is do an alignment with subliner for my spectral alignments, for my spatial alignments. Um, and then af later, after I get my audio analyzer set up, assuming that I have time, I go back and I verify that stuff. And that's the method that I recommend to other people. Um, okay. Thanks for watching.